Hey guys, welcome to my channel. Today I decided to do like a breakdown of uh, this scene instead of speed art. I thought this could be more helpful to show you how I did this scene. So yeah, let me get started. So first, I build up the scene in Blender. I believe I'm using 3.1. I'm not quite sure, but there is no difference. So yeah, basically this is my modeling. And let's start piece by piece. So first, let me explain. This is a volume principle. I just wanted to build up like a fog. So this file is quite heavy. So yeah, as you can see, it's transparent. So those are my settings for the volume. Nothing fancy, just volume scatter with some density and that's it. I'll hide this now. Then I have a water that is going inside here for the temple. So those will be my settings. Let me get a closer look. So I have a light part with a mixed shader, one transparent BSDF and one principal. Plus we got some volume for the density of the water. So I put a mass grave texture just to give it more details and the settings with the, the settings are quite similar. I just took down the roughness and increased the transmission. And yeah, that's basically for the water. Let's add this. It's not special, just a normal cube. All right. Next, let's talk about the room. The room is just a simple cube that I model and put some bevel on it. So it's not going to look exactly flat. Let me get this better. As you can see, it looks a, a bit like a temple with some bevel around those areas. And the texture helps a lot for more detail look. The texture I'm using is just the normal stones with greenish stuff. Simple, and I decided to use the same material, so it's going to be a very cohesive piece. And the lighting will take the other part. I'm going to hide all of them one by one, so it's not going to be so confusing. After I build up the temple, I build up this room just to because I created some doors. If I put some lighting in here, I thought it could be way better. Anyway, it doesn't make much difference. Then this model is quite simple. I thought to be like a rectangle with some paths that, that go into the doors and it's going to the main center of the temple or something like that. So the texture is the same. It's a texture I found, that's it. So those are my settings for the texture. Nothing special. Most, most of the work is coming from the textures and the displacement. 
So that's what makes it look cooler. Of course, I put bevel on this as well because I'm going to use it as you can see here. And also I use it on this part as well. Although it's not very visible. But it still makes some difference. All right, let me scroll here. So we cover this part. This is just also a rectangle with bevel on the bottom. So it gives more details. And yeah, that's it for that. All right, the columns and Let me just move this so you can see it. This is kind of like a stair, stairs in a sense. I thought it's gonna be way cooler if I make like a holder of some sort. So basically this is just, let me just, a circle with eight vertices. Let me close up. Let's go to edit mode. So I, what I did was I fill up this circle and invert that section. And then I use those faces with extrude. I extruded this one one more time. And one more time, and that's it. You get the point, I believe. Okay, this is covered. So the columns was designed the same way, with uh, the same circle. Just more, extrude. Yeah, basically that's it. Okay, next uh, it's the, the metallic planks and the planks that hold on this part here. So this is the same material as usual. I believe that's another material. But it doesn't matter so much because they are very close. But it's basically, again, a temple material. I decided to make like a metal planks. So for the metal planks, it's uh, just basic metallic material with some transmission. And I put one roughness texture. If I give it a close-up, maybe it will be more visible. So I believe here, so this is the roughness texture here, this part. And yeah, the ring is just a torus. I created this torus and cut it in the half, give it the same metallic material, that's it. The chain is built up the same way. I made a torus, made a chain shape. So if I go to edit mode, you can see it. So this is what it looks like. And I give it, I give it a array modifier. And I place one empty so I can control that chain however I want. It was way more easier for me to do it that way. So that's, that's why I made that decision. Let me hide this so we don't get confused. Davis. 
Five is uh, just the same thing. They have a basic material. With a shrink wrap modifier and mirror, so I can duplicate easy everything around that area that I wanted. So this is the leaf material. It's basically cover, uh, leaf texture. There is some leaf textures. And from here, I can randomize if I wanted, but I didn't want to do that. Yeah. It's just an asset that I had. Uh, let me go back for this. This ornament here. It's uh, something that I've created with earlier. I had it in my gallery as an asset. So I decided to put it here with the same stone material. So I didn't want the scene to look so empty here. So if we go to the camera view, I'm going to see, maybe if actually I go to render view would be way more visible. So I just wanted to add extra detail to the scene. So if I hide it, this area looks so empty to me. And I've seen in other temples that there is kind of a ornaments placed around or engraved, so that's why I decided to do that. I'm adding these. So those are just 3D models that I've downloaded. And just place them around, as you can see on here, on here, like somebody was in this place. I had some pots in here and the head as well, the statue head. I want it to look like it's kind of abandoned place and somebody come and discover the thing, that crystal. So yeah, so we cover that, that part. Most, most of the scene was built based on simple forms with bevel that, and texture that made it look so interesting. So that holder is for the chains and the rings and everything. So that, that's pretty much it. And the crystal was how I made it was with icosphere and I put a decimate modifier and I just play with the set with the ratio and the settings and I got this shape. I I added uh, some bevel as well to to the same crystal and yeah pretty much that's it. And I found a crystal texture. So as you can see here, <clears throat> it's it's look cool, but if I go to render view, this texture make the crystal look way more different. Let me show you in a close up. Like it has all those extra displacement details but made it look way, way more, more cooler. So let me show an example. So if I, if I delete all those, it looks so boring. And I hope 
that helps somehow. I don't know. So yeah, this is the crystal. And I believe the last thing I have to cover is those. So those are like a water dropping from the top somewhere. I thought it's going to look cool. So this will be my material. So I, I put a mixed shader with transparent and translucent mat BSDF and a color RAM that can control the the actual noise texture. So basically this black area is not visible and this color ramp is like a mask to for the water. And yeah, pretty much that's the scene. It doesn't look so bad. The lightning is the main thing that made up the scene. So I had exactly two lights, one area light and one spotlight, if I'm not wrong. Yeah, so this, this is my spotlight. As you can see, it's quite big. So it will cover this area. It's like a six, 1600 watts. And then we got area light that helps with the lighting. Basically, it was so hard to light up this area when I when I closed the the actual pyramid. Uh, I believe, yeah. So if I remove one of those, and it becomes pitch dark. I believe those helped a lot. You see, what's the difference? I think that even that light doesn't do much, but it doesn't matter. All right. So yeah, pretty much that was most of the parts for building this scene. I believe I cover everything. So the next step would be in Photoshop. So I'm going to close this. And I want to save that. So in Photoshop, so this was after the render. It's, this is how it looked like. Sorry, but without those. So pretty much this was the render. And I start building with some effects first. The first was an image with just trays. So I found it for free online. Can't remember from where because it was staying in my PC for a long time. So I'm sorry I couldn't give credit. It's someone's Ahmad Dini from Unsplash. So I cannot give you links for that, sorry. Uh, yeah, so this is what it came from. I put this on soft light and just give it a colorized green texture with not much saturation and a bit darker. Then I added this kind of spark, I would say spark, to make it more interesting, like something is glowing. Yeah. Then added more highlights. So 
Kundus highlights uh, on linear dot with 46% opacity. After that, I had this smoke texture. So basically, if I remove the mask, this is what it looked like. And I decided to just put it somewhere in this area. So let me grab some color. Yeah, and I just duplicate some of them and place them in a way that it's gonna come in here. Okay. Uh, after that, I put this model. It looked adventurous, so I decided to use that model. So for the model, just created a basic shadow. So this is the shadow for the bottom part of the legs. Let me zoom in here. So this is the the dark shadow, as I like to say. So let's say this is dark shadow, and this shadow is exactly these legs. What I did for this shadow was I I selected the model, I created a new layer, and pick up a color from here, some, from some of those shadows, and just fill up that layer with this this color. So when I when I had that black silhouette of, of her, I just went to with control T and transform mode and flip it vertical. Then I move it and place it on this side because I saw that those those tools here, plates and clays and so on, the shadow is coming this way. So I thought it's way better to place the shadow on that side. And then I had just exposed the layer to make it make her darker so if i remove it she looks too white for the scene so i place this exposure level with darker settings and i just painted deleted this area that i needed the lighting and the lighting is coming this way, so only that parts. Yeah, and pretty much that is for this part. Then I just started a curse adjustment layer with finding dark and I believe I use find dark and light colors. And I place one gradient. So this is my settings. It just give more different and good. I don't know, I just like using it. It kind of looks more contrasty, as you can see. It makes some difference. It's on soft light with 23%. Because if I increase it too much, it looks weird. Um, I leave it like that and then just uh, one color look, look up with film stop to boost the contrast the contrast in the scene. After that I might throw those layers. Let me just and, and apply one camera raw filter. So Let's go through the basics. I just wanted a green tint with kind of bluish colors. So I went for that. I, I lift up the exposure, the contrast, the highlights a bit, the shadows. 
I removed some of the blocks because I didn't like it. I put a bit more of the texture, some decays, and I didn't play with this. Uh, I believe I just went to give the luminosity of these colors a little bit down. And I applied a vignette. And also, if I'm not wrong, I applied the apply balance perspective. So just a simple rotation. Yeah, that's for the settings. I hope it's not too fast. Then I use the cover dot layer to highlight a little bit just those. As you can see, those parts that I wanted, not all the greens. And I decided to paint. I just painted those rays here of the water to add more detail. Otherwise, it was kind of looking. I don't know why the render didn't made made it so good, but as you can see, it didn't look so so good. It kind of like there is no water, so I decided to put those details. Although the water is clear here, um, I don't know. I just made that decision. And after that, I merge everything from this group and try to play with the camera roll again. So I took some of the whites down and I wanted, I saw that she was too bright. I wanted to play a little bit with the shadows, but it didn't work. So we will get to that. I lift up the blacks because I I don't want to use blacks for the shadows. I believe I only touched these parts here. I don't know. I just find it way more easier for me. Yeah, and I play with the uh, the target adjustment tool. Like you can pick up color, and you can play with the tones, as you can see. Yeah, and at the end, I when I put black and white layer, so. If I remove this layer, I could see that this part of her body is too bright compared to these here. So I decided to play with the dodge and burn. Maybe it's even bright now, but otherwise I'm going to lose a lot of details of the character. So. And basically, I created a new layer on overlay mode with 50% gray. And then with the burn tool here with 25% exposure, I start painting on her so I can make these parts darker. And yeah, I believe that's all it covers. Well, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. I I hope it helps you somehow. And see you next time. Thank you.